This is Tom Fox, and welcome to a new season of Adventures in Compliance. This season, we're going to take up the stories from the collection entitled His Last Poe, some reminiscences, reminiscences of Sherlock Holmes, which is a 1917 collection of previously published Holmes stories by Arthur Conan Doyle, including the titular short story, His Last Poe. The War Service of Sherlock Holmes. The collection's first edition adjusts the anthology subtitle to some later remembrances of Holmes. All of the editions contain a, a preface from Dr. Watson, which we will read in a little bit. The book itself, or the collection, was published by John Murray in October 1917 in the U.S. by jo George R. Dorn in the same year. The collection contains The Adventure of the Cardboard Box, which was included in the American first edition of the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, but dropped later. Six of the stories were published in the Strand between 1608 and December 1913. His final story, His Last Bow, The War Service, Sherlock Holmes, is an epilogue about Holmes' war service and was first published in Collier's on September 22nd. 1917, one book before the book's premiere. There are some great stories in here, and I know you will enjoy them. And I hope you will enjoy this season of Adventures and Compliance really as much as I've enjoyed reading the stories. If you've enjoyed this series or enjoy Sherlock Holmes, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review this podcast wherever great podcasts are listened to. Adventures in Compliance is a production of Compliance Podcast Network. Today we're going to take up the disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax. We're going to have a quick word from our network sponsor, Ethico, then we'll be right back. In the intricate world of ethics and compliance, each second is precious, and slow case closures are more than just delays, they're missed opportunities. Enter Ethico. Our solution revolutionizes case management, cutting case closure times in half, and turning every challenge into a chance for improvement. Imagine a workspace where efficiency and compliance coexist harmoniously. Don't just dream of faster resolutions. Make it your reality. Visit ethico.com slash cpn today to book a demo and dive into our exclusive white paper by Tom Fox, 2023, the year in compliance. Empower your team with the tools they deserve. The adventure of the disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax appeared in the Strand Magazine in December 1911. It's the story of an English aristocrat, Lady Frances Carfax, who vanishes from her hotel in Lausanne, Switzerland. Home's suspicions and fears go into overdrive, although not so much that he can take the time to investigate the matter himself. It is Watson who is dispatched to the foreign arena to see what he can deduce about the disappearance. Unfortunately, not much. The Lady Fairfax is alone. Her baggage is packed with valuable jewels in her room. Five weeks have elapsed since she was last heard of, and she always made a point of writing weekly letters to her former governess, but none have been received for over a month. Neither has any, been, any trace been found through other means. Just two checks have been written on her bank account and one to the last hotel she stayed at, the other to a young French maid she had in her service. There are two clues. The first is that she was spending a lot of time in the company of another couple at the hotel, the Schlesingers. The second is that she appeared to be in fear of a distinctly large bearded Englishman whom she met out on a walk one day. Holmes, who's scarcely impressed with Watson's information, is at least content that the lady's life is in danger but not from the bearded man. Holmes quickly discovers this is her former fiancé, Philip Green, and his only desire is to be re reunited with Lady Frances, who years earlier, their union had been prohibited by her family because he was so poor. But he's wealthy now, and he wants her back. Jay Gatsby had this on no one. No, it is the Schlesingers that Holmes is worried about, for he has information that places their entire identity in doubt. Mr. Schlesinger is a well-known Australian confidence trickster named Henry Peters, and his wife is a brutal woman named Fraser. 
Together, posing as a disabled professor and his doting wife, they win the trust of young, unsuspecting women, then take them for every penny they can. So it is with the luckless Lady Frances. Deducing that the trio are now in London, Holmes circulates within the pawn shops in London, with which he is acquainted and swiftly discovers that a man matching Peter's description has recently pawned a pendant identical to one of Lady Frances's key pieces of jewelry. Days later, with Philip Green keeping watch, Fraser visits the same store to pawn the pendant's twin piece. Worse still, when Green follows her as she leaves the store, it is to the undertaker's, where she has placed an order for an out-of-the-ordinary coffin. The funeral for which this item will take place. Acting fast, Holmes and Watson visit Peter's home, demanding to see the body. They have no search warrant, and Peters is swiftly able to evict them with the assistance of a none-too-willing passing policeman. Not, however, before he has shown the duo the object of their curiosity, a very small, very emaciated, very dead old lady, the wife's childhood nurse, Rose Spencer by name. Holmes is baffled until he spends a sleepless night going over every aspect of the case. Suddenly, the significance of the out-of-the-ordinary coffin dawns on him. And even with a normal-sized corpse, it would have been large enough for two bodies. It is far too vast for the tiny frame of the nurse. Back to the house and back to the parlor where the coffin has been closed, the police are on their way and hopefully bearing a search warrant that Holmes has been promised. But there's no time to wait. The coffin is forced open and there, chloroformed and unconscious, is Lady Frances Carfax her body unceremoniously dumped on top of the old woman's. But Watson is able to revive her. But what of the dastardly duo that intended to bury her alive? They've escaped. And strangely, Holmes does not seem too especially uh, mourned about their disappearance. Their plan, after all, was a clever device, he tells Watson. It is new to me in the annals of crime. If, friends, escape the clutches of Inspector Lestrade, I suspect to hear more of some brilliant incidents in a future story. So what are some of the key investigative lessons for the compliance professional around this story, The Disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax? I find several valuable lessons for the compliance professional, particularly in the realm of investigations. As Holmes and Watson unravel the mystery of the missing Lady Carfax, they employ methods and demonstrate principles that can be applied directly to the compliance function. So what are some of the key lessons? Number one, the importance of gathering comprehensive information. Holmes begins the investigation by thoroughly gathering all of his available information about Lady Carfax, her recent activities, and her acquaintances. This comprehensive approach is crucial in compliance investigations as well. Before jumping to conclusions, it is essential to collect all relevant data, which might include internal documents, emails, interviews, employees, and other sources. Be, ensure that you gather all available information before forming hypotheses or making decisions. A premature conclusion based on incomplete data can lead to overlooking key facts or misrepresenting the situation. Number two, the need for discretion and confidentiality. The lesson is you must maintain strict confidentiality during investigations to avoid compromising the process and to protect the reputations of those involved. Holmes understands the importance of discretion in this investigation. He is careful not to alarm Lady Frances's relatives or acquaintances and unnecessarily and conducts his inquiries with a level of confidentiality. In the compliance world, particularly in sensitive investigations, maintaining confidentiality is critical to protect the integrity of the investigation and the privacy of those involved. Number three, attention to detail. For the compliance professional, focusing on details seemingly as seemingly minor facts or inconsistencies can be crucial in uncovering the truth. One of the hallmarks of Holmes' investigative techniques is his attention to detail. In this story, his ability to notice small but significant details, such as the specific characteristic of a person Offering a carriage ride, helping piece together the truth. Compliance professionals must pay close attention to details, especially when reviewing documents, analyzing transactions, or interviewing witnesses. Number four, 
critical thinking and avoiding assumptions. For the compliance professional, challenging assumptions and exploring all possibilities or all possible explanations is critical. Approach each investigation with an open mind and consider multiple angles and potential motives. Holmes is known for his critical thinking and avoidance of assumptions. In the story of the disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax, he does not immediately accept the most obvious explanation, but considers alternative possibilities. This mindset is essential in compliance investigations where the first explanation is the most apparent culprit is not always correct. Number five, the importance of collaboration. This is one of the key themes we've talked about throughout our exploration of all of Sherlock Holmes' stories. And for the compliance professional, collaborating with other departments and stakeholders to leverage their expertise and gather a more comprehensive understanding of the situation is critical. Although Holmes is a central figure in the investigation, he often relies on the assistance of Dr. Watson and others to solve cases. In compliance, collaboration with different departments, legal, HR, IT, audit, internal audit, finance, operations, can provide valuable insights and resources that enhance the effectiveness of any investigation. Number seven, understanding human behavior. For the compliance professional, developing a keen understanding of human behavior and the psychology to better anticipate potential risk and understand the context behind actions is critical for your investigation. Home success often hinges on his deep understanding of human behavior, the motives, and the psychology. In this story, he, his insights into Lady Frances's character and the motivations of those guide her actions. For compliance professionals, understanding the behavior of employees, the pressures they face, and the potential motives for their unethical conduct is key to identifying risks and addressing issues effectively. Here, you can think of the fraud triangle or Jonathan Marks, fraud pentagon. Number eight, follow the money. For the compliance professional, utilizing financial analysis is a key tool in investigations. Unusual financial patterns or unexplained transactions can provide critical evidence of wrongdoing. Indeed, one of the common themes of many of Holmes' investigations is this very one, the importance of following financial clues, whether it's tracking a suspect's a suspect's financial transactions or understanding the economic motivations behind actions. The financial analysis is often crucial. In compliance, particularly in areas like anti-corruption, anti-money laundering, or fraud, following the money is the key to uncovering misconduct. Number nine, documentation and record keeping. For the compliance professional, the lesson is you must keep detailed records of investigative activities. Proper documentation is crucial for transparency, accountability, and defense against potential challenges. While this story does not delve deeply into record-keeping explicitly, Holmes' meticulous documentation of his findings and observations is implied throughout all of his cases. For compliance professionals, maintaining thorough documentation of the investigative process, including interviews, evidence collected, decision made, is essential. This not only ensures transparency, but provides a clear audit trail if the investigation is later scrutinized. And finally, number 10, learning from every case. For the compliance professional, you should conduct post-investigation reviews to identify potential lessons learned and improve your process for future investigations. Holmes learns from each of his cases, refining his methods and understanding future investigations. Compliance professionals should do the same. Every investigation, whether successful or not, offers lessons that can be used to improve for, for future compliance efforts. In conclusion, the disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax is more than just a detective story. It's a narrative rich with investigative principles that can be applied directly to the compliance field for a compliance professional in the compliance arena. From thorough information gathering to understanding human behavior, the techniques that Sherlock Holmes uses are timeless and highly relevant to the compliance professional. By applying these lessons, compliance professionals can enhance the effectiveness of their investigations, ensuring that they not only uncover the truth, but do so in a manner that is ethical, thorough, and defensible. I hope you've enjoyed this story and this season's review of Sherlock Holmes stories from The Last Bow. 
I hope you'll join us again next week where we take up another of Conan Doyle's great stories. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. If you'd like some additional compliance tip, check out the compliance tip of the day, where in five minutes I give you one compliance tip that you can incorporate directly into your compliance program at little or no cost. Adventures in Compliance is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.